This is Mitchell Clute with Natural Foods Merchandiser Show Daily, and I'm here today with Paul Stamets, the founder of Fungi Perfecti, an expert in medicinal mushrooms and author of many books about fungus, including his most recent, Mycelium Running, How Mushrooms Can Help Save the World. And, you know, I wanted to start today by talking about uh, the history of mushrooms. The, these are plants, uh, fungi that have been used medicinally for thousands of years, and yet they're not that prevalent on natural food supplement shelves. Why do you think that is? Well, I think they will become increasingly more prevalent. Uh, for instance, this mushroom here has been used uh, by humans for more than 2,000 years. It is called agaricon, and Dioscorides first described it in 65 AD, almost 2,000 years ago, as a treatment against consumption. If this mushroom grows exclusively in the old growth forest, and a passion of mine is going into the old growth forest and trying to protect the fungi that are in the forest by getting them into culture. So agaricon, you know, it's an amazing species because it, it survives 100-mile-an-hour uh, uh, winds over, over 75 years, um, hundreds of inches of rain per, per year, and yet it doesn't rot. It's got a host defensive resistance against pathogens. And we can benefit from this because actually many of the pathogens that afflict mushrooms also afflict us. And so the host defenses of resistance of mushrooms against pathogens, we also can benefit from the mushrooms' uh, uh, antimicrobial properties. And so this is something that we're very active in, in, uh, in our research. This is uh, Amadou, and this is a birch polypore. And this hat actually, is made from this mushroom. And our ancestors, again, thousands of years ago, realized that if you boiled this mushroom in water, it would, it would protect the food from souring because it has antibacterial properties. And after it does that, you can pull this mushroom apart after a few days and you can make felt or fabric from it. The mushroom comes from this fine cobwebby stuff called mycelium. And the mycelium is all on the ground everywhere. You can find mycelium anywhere right now by going outside, finding a, a, a log on the ground and just tipping it over. You'll see that white cobweb growth. Well, that, that's the mycelium. And the mycelium builds the mushroom, and the mushroom builds mycelium. And our ancestors found that this allowed for the portability of fire. So there's no doubt that we all came from Africa, and we migrated north to Europe, and we discovered something new called winter. <laughs> Oops. And this allowed for the portability of fire. You can hollow this mushroom out, put embers of a fire in it, and carry fire for days. And our, our ancient clans, if you couldn't keep fire alive in the winter, you would perish. So these mushrooms have been instrumental for human survival. So you've got a long history of traditional use, medicinal and otherwise. In terms of contemporary peer-reviewed research, is there uh, more data to back up some of the claims for immune defense and other properties? Excellent question. Uh, we've been approved for a $2.2 million breast cancer clinical study with, with, with Bastyr Medical School uh, in Seattle. And they juried five different uh, companies, and our company came out number one, uh, using turkey tail mushrooms uh, for non-estrogen responsive forms of breast cancer. Uh, we're in the third to fourth year of the clinical study. It should be finished by November. Uh, we already know that there is a strong immunopotentiation. And host defense is a term of art, and it is also the umbrella of our new product line. Many of your listeners have heard about host defense. This, this is the formula that I, that I originated. And um, host defense contains 17 different mushroom species, including agaricon, including amadou, and including also the one that many of your listeners are familiar with called reishi. And so we have many of these polypore mushrooms, which individually have developed strategies against infection. And so these mushrooms often uh, offer a platform of multiple benefits, antimicrobial, antibacterial, antiviral, and immunomodulating, as well as anti-inflammatory. Now, immunoenhancing or immunomodulatory and anti-inflammatory would be seemingly a contradiction because when your immune system is activated, it oftentimes is an inflammatory response. You cut yourself, you're bruised, it swells. Well, that's your immune system being hyperactive. And so these mushrooms afford a unique uh, mode of uh, helping your health by modulating the immune system so it doesn't overreact, and so you don't have an inflammatory reaction, but you have a modulated immune response sustained over the long term that then can help you uh, fight disease. So obviously, uh, this is a passion of yours, as well as your, your full-time job. So on a biographical note, how did you get interested in fungi, and how did that turn into a career? Uh, I was a very shy little boy, and I stared at the ground all the time. 
and I found mushrooms. And uh, I have a twin brother, and my parents told me not to throw puffballs at him because if the puffball spores got into his eyes, it would cause him to become blind. Well, of course, I immediately put that information into action. I pelted my twin brother with as many puffballs as I could. Uh, that was my earliest memories of getting involved with mushrooms. But mushrooms, have, uh, I spent a lot of time in the old growth forest, and I've come to learn how important mushrooms and mycelium is for the fabric of nature. They're the foundation of the food web. They're the interface organisms between life and death, but they pair with plants and animals. And our pairing with fungi now, especially this critical joint uh, juncture in our evolution uh, of our life on this planet, we have learned that if we pair with, with mushrooms and we pair with fungi, our host defenses are greatly increased and our longevity has also increased. Final question, did your parents mislead you? Can your brother still see? <laughs> we both suffer from, uh, from near, nearsightedness, you know, but I've been assured that has nothing to do with the spores from puffballs. Well, thank